Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been like three or four months since my last video, so I figured it's probably time for me to make another one. I, I'm back down in the basement working on this project. Uh, I've done a little bit of work down here since the last video, and unfortunately I didn't capture that on film. As you can see behind me, uh, I started working on this deck area, and that's over where the dirt used to be in the previous videos. If you look up here, there's three, three strings that symbolize where some poles are gonna go, where I'm gonna cut uh, the floor out to put in the staircase that's gonna come down onto this deck. So today's project is going to be starting with putting an I-beam up there to support the floor joists and uh, working on these poles and placing some plates down on these footers down here and getting all that situated so I can cut that hole for the staircase. Now, with the I-beam being as long as it is for the, the span, it's about 12 feet, I'm not able to get it up into the floor joist due to the length. I'm, I'm gonna try and slide them up in there and it's just not gonna work out with the length of it. So I'm gonna chop it in half to where uh, it's gonna be two I-beams that make up one I-beam and the, the, uh, the two pieces will meet at the middle pole. So first order of business is cutting that I-beam and then we'll try and get it up there somehow. I'm hoping that the scissor lift can get it up there and I can just kind of manhandle it up into the floor joist. So we'll see how that works and go from there. All right, let's cut some I-beams. Now to cut this I-beam, I'm just gonna use an old four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. I've got plasma cutters and other saws and stuff, but I know that with this, I can do a nice clean cut. It's gonna take a little longer. It's a little more of a pain in the butt, but it's gonna be super clean, very little cleanup, and it's just nice, nice and simple that way. That's what I was afraid of. It's not gonna fit. So what I'm gonna have to do is remove at least one floor joist in order to be able to kind of weave that thing up into the rafters so I can get it in place. What I'm gonna do is put another I-beam up there, bolt it to the adjacent floor joist, chop out one floor joist so I can weave up the I-beam into place, and then uh, I guess we'll go from there. More I-beams. So basically what I've done here, I put this I-beam up, I've got it supported by two floor joists on either side of this floor joist here. What I'm gonna be able to do now is cut this floor joist and this one will be supported by the two adjacent ones. And that way I can slide my I-beam pieces up there, give me my permanent I-beams that'll hold up the floor. This is probably a little overkill because there's not that much weight up here anyway. It's just, I've just got my office up there. There's a wall right over, uh, pretty much right over where this I-beam's at, and that's gonna be spreading out the load to the other uh, floor joists anyway, but 
Uh, better to be safe than sorry. I'd rather this floor not come down on me when I cut anything. So uh, that's why there's I-beams here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that thing and uh, hopefully it don't fall down on me. Not gonna lie, I even though I have this pretty well supported, it's, it's a little uh, nerve wracking cutting out floor joists. I'm just glad it didn't come down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fish these uh, eye beams up and get this floor supported. base plates installed. This is four inch pipe, schedule 40, so it's got a quarter inch wall. Uh, it'll definitely be plenty strong for what I'm using it for. I found the best way to get a straight cut around a piece of pipe is to use a piece of paper or something flexible with a straight edge. So I'm just gonna use some craft paper, wrap it around, and when your ends meet up, it'll be nice and straight. So I'm just gonna trim it here. Get it in place. And a little masking tape. All right, I'm down to the last column. This is a six inch column. This is actually a piece of salvaging from the poles that I cut out earlier to support my I-beam that goes down in the middle of the building. And this is a new piece. I didn't have enough to have one solid piece, so I'm gonna splice it in the middle here. I have beveled this at a, about a 45 degree. I'm gonna do a TIG weld all the way around, uh, multiple passes just to make sure I have a good solid uh, weld all the way through. The other poles are four inch, so I'm gonna do the back two four inch, and this one's six inch, the one that's furthest out. And I plan on adding like a jib boom arm to this. So the, the larger diameter is gonna make it a little more sturdy. And it's what I had laying around, so. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna get on welding this thing. I'm just gonna tack it up first, take all this stuff off, and then I'll fully weld it up. I've got all these base plates welded on. Now you see there's a gap underneath this base plate and that's not gonna support the weight of the floor above me. So what I'm gonna have to do is build a little form and then pour in some construction grout and that'll flow underneath it and fill in that gap. Now construction grout is not the same thing as using a shower. It's built for base plates and like machinery bases and stuff like that. So this is intended for this kind of purpose. And the reason why you do this it gives you a little bit of play to adjust this plate while you're building this and also while you're welding this out the heat from your weld does not go into the concrete because that's really bad concrete likes to uh, explode under high heat and uh, when welding on top of concrete that is an issue it can it can pop at the surface and that can be very dangerous so this gives you enough air space to weld and not create that issue and then you just fill it up with grout and it fills in that gap and then you're good to go the next step forms
All right, I think that's a good stopping point for this episode. Uh, I don't want to make this video too too drawn out. Uh, looks like we've got our poles installed, and now all we've got to do is uh, reinforce the ends of these floor joists, and then finish cutting out the rest of the floor joists, and hopefully put in a staircase. So uh, I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you for watching.